Let's continue to look at motion in the plane, but not restrict it to straight line motion. So let's look at one of our favorite, well, I think our favorite parametrized curve, circular motion, uniform circular motion on a circle centered at the origin of radius r, starting at our usual starting point. That's going to be r comma zero. And so that's going to be, this is the position. So if we wanted to say, oh, the position as a function of time, we just put them together and say this is a point with these two coordinates. And the very first thing, or one of the very first things we'd want to do is figure out if you're at some point, let's say t equals maybe pi over 6, I want to get the velocity vector. That should be as it's going around this curve, that velocity vector, I've mentioned this already, that should be a vector that's tangent to the curve because it's going in exactly the direction of motion. And its uh, length, of course, is the speed of the particle. And we mentioned that a little bit already because we were so interested in the integral of the speed, which is the arc length. But there's lots of reasons to be interested in the velocity other than just finding arc length, things like that. So we're going to do the same trick we did before just to make everything uh, use the same kind of mathematical object. We're just going to say, instead of thinking of this as, a, as this is a variable point, we're going to think of this as a variable vector, just by always connecting it to the origin. And operationally, it just means change the notation. So we're now we're thinking it as a variable vector. Really, though, it's a, it's a, this is a little bit fake because it's re we're really interested in the point. And so this vector sometimes is misleading. Um, because it's just a dodge to sort of get vectors into the business. And there's nothing that's like actually doing this motion. The particle is going around the circle. It's not like going from the origin to there. So I'm actually going to erase that because I don't actually want to think of that geometrically as a vector. It's just we're going to use this um, sort of notationally. Now, the, the reason that's nice is that we're going to take the derivative of this. The derivative of position should be velocity. The book goes into more details about this that I don't think are particularly uh, particularly necessary for the level we're at. And the derivative of a vector function, you just take the derivatives of the components. And again, if you want to justify, justify that more theoretically, you can. But I don't think I've met any people, or hardly any people, who have any doubts about that being a good idea. We already talked about how um, this is dx dt. This is really the horizontal, the rate of horizontal motion. This is the rate of vertical motion. And the components, those are the components of the full motion vector of the particle. Um, and this is where it's just kind of nice in term, conceptually that we just took the derivative of a vector function and we got out a vector function. And we didn't have to think of them as derivative of a point function giving a vector function. It's just a little bit weirder. You can totally do it that way, though. Um, so, in particular, in Stewart's book, in 10.4, he talks about the derivative of a vector function as if it's this totally abstract thing. And only one section later does he say, oh, by the way, this is the velocity. Um, I think that's backwards. I think velocity is the absolutely the thing you should think of as your primary example of the derivative of a vector function. Um, and then we'll see other examples in just a second. So let's do this. Um, at t equals pi over 6... Oh yeah, what was the what are the coordinates here at t equals pi over six? It's going to be uh, root three over two r and one half r. Okay, that's the actual coordinates, or if you like the components of this r vector that I don't really want to draw. Now this pink vector, that at t equals pi over six is going to be minus r over two and r. Uh, root 3 over 2r. So they just switch and one one goes minus. And one thing you should note, I guess I do want to draw this one more time. One thing you should note, of course, is that there's a classic thing about the um, the tangent vector to a circle and the radial vector to a circle. Those should be orthogonal. They should be perpendicular to each other. Orthogonal is a synonym for that. Um, and it's true that if you take a, um, a vector and you flip its components and put a minus sign on it, they will end up being perpendicular to each other. That's, that's a story for maybe for another video, though. So um, in any rate, you can see it's going left 
and up, and it's going more up than it's left in this particular case. Okay, um, so what's the next thing we might want to do after taking the velocity? We might want to take the acceleration. And so let me just see if I can squeeze that in here. Well, no, let, let me put it up here. Okay, I don't really need this. Okay, so the acceleration is just the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of the position vector. And that's going to be, in general, it's going to be minus r cosine t minus r sine t. Now that's quite interesting comparing to that position vector. It's just the opposite of that guy. It's very interesting. Okay, and so the velocity vector, let's use a different color, maybe purple if that works. The acceleration vector, rather, is pointing exactly in towards the origin. And that's something that you actually feel. If you're going around in a circle, if you're driving in a car, that um, the your seat in the car has to push, give you an inward push. You often feel that as if you're trying to go outward, but what is actually happening is that it's pushing you inward in order to keep you in a circle, accelerating you away from what would be your natural motion if you weren't accelerated, which would be the straight line motion we did before. Okay, um, so this is a very nice little result that if you take two derivatives, then you get exactly something that's in the opposite direction. In this case, because there was no f um, number in front of the t, just to make things a little simpler, we're actually getting minus, exactly minus the position vector. So um, going from position to velocity to acceleration is exactly just taking the derivatives of these vector functions. And every time you take the derivative of a vector function, you're just doing component by component. It's really nice um, because it's kind of cool geometrically, but operationally, it's exactly just doing regular old one variable calculus stuff in two slots. Also works in three slots, works in 17 slots as well in 17 dimensions. Um, so there's one thing that I think, um, oh yeah, let's look at the straight line case real quick. And then in the next video, we'll talk about going backwards. What would you, when would you go from like acceleration to velocity position and what operation would that be? I think you can probably figure that out. Um, so the straight line case, remember R of T was a constant vector plus t times another constant vector. Great thing about the di differentiating vector functions is you can work with vectors, constant vectors, as if they're just constant numbers. You can, if you have analogs for all of the rules of differentiation, r prime of t, the derivative of a constant is just zero. And the derivative of a constant times t is just that constant. Oh, hey, this is exactly what it should be. This was supposed to be um, constant velocity motion along a straight line, and indeed the velocity at which usually is a function of t is just this constant that I put in to start the process. R double prime of t, of course, is the derivative of a constant, which is zero. And that's exactly what's supposed to be true for straight line motion with constant velocity. Oh, actually, I do want to do one more while we're on this subject. Uh, maybe makes this a little longer. This is a very simple example, but it's, it's so profound. It's so so nice. Reuniform circular motion is a big deal. But what if I had a slightly different situation? R of t is like r uh, cosine t squared, r sine t squared. Okay. Then let me take the velocity again. Okay. And we're going to get a chain rule factor. We're going to get 2t minus 2t r sine t squared and 2t r cosine t squared. Now, one thing we can always do with vectors is, is if we have a const, if we have a common factor in both, that's really just a scale factor. So this is the scale factor 2t times still an r sine, uh, sorry, minus r sine and an r cosine. Now it happens to be of t squared because that's the angle that I'm at on the circle, but it still has a very similar result that up to a scaling, we switched these two components and put a minus on. That turns out to still 
be a vector that's going perpendicular, but notice that as t increases, we're going to get something that's much, much more fat, much faster. So let's think about that for a minute. As if I've got co r cosine t squared and r sine t squared, the angle that I'm at on the circle moves as the square of the time, and so that is going to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Uh, in particular, the speed of this curve is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of these guys. I'm never going to write the minus sign because I'm all, it's just going to go away. It's just going to confuse you if, you if you write it. Just don't even write it. And notice, again, I get the same constant factor coming out. There's a 2t squared. And then I'm and a 2t squared here. That's a constant common factor of 2t squared, but then it's going to square root. So I'm just going to get a 2t. Also, a common factor of r squared, a square root, going to get r. Although, to be careful, the square root of a square, since t could be negative, that's going to be absolute value. Okay. And then I just get the square root of the sine of a certain quantity. Yeah, it happens to be t squared, but who cares? Sine squared of t squared and cosine squared of t squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared of anything is equal to 1. So I get a rather simple result. So the velocity of this particular guy is pr proportional to um, how big the circle is, but it's also proportional to the absolute value of t. So this is the speed. Okay. Um, and that's, again, confirmation that as t goes on, it's getting faster and faster and faster. Um, a really interesting thing is what happens with the acceleration. I kind of hate to erase this, but I really want it to be right there. The acceleration here, r double prime of t, I think I'm going to go from this this one. There, I'm going to get a little product rule action. I'm going to get minus 2 r sine t squared, and then minus uh, 4t squared the, from the minus 2t left alone and a new chain rule factor, r cosine t squared. Similar thing over here, 2r cosine t squared from differentiating the t, and then plus 4t squared r, ooh, minus, because now I'm differentiating the cosine. Let me separate that out into two, two vectors. That's equal to something with a scale factor of 2r minus sine t squared cosine t squared, and then minus uh, 4t squared r cosine t squared sine t squared. Notice that this second piece is a negative scalar times the cosine sine, so that's again a part that is going in, inward. But it's not the whole story, because there's this other piece coming from the, the product rule. What's happening here is that you're not, if you are speeding up as you're going around a, a circle, you are not experiencing just centripetal inward acceleration. You're also got some acceleration that's pushing you in, either into the seat or into the seat belt of the car, there's some sort of acceleration that's going forward or back. Maybe, uh, in this case, it's accelerating going this way. The total acceleration is a vector sum of those guys, and it looks like this. That's why this is getting necessarily more complicated than it was in the other case. So that's that's pushing things a little bit more in a complicated direction. But it's there's really cool stuff, um, the physics you can get out of that.